Custom Point Rubrics and Discussion Grading. Part this is a detailed, step-by-step, three-part presentation on how to grade discussion topics using rubrics. In the first part of this presentation, we will make a Custom Points Rubric. In the second part, we will share the rubric with students and associate it with a discussion grade item. In the third part, we will use the rubric to grade the students on the discussion topic. Our example instructor has a discussion topic. She wants to grade it with a rubric. Let's tell her what to do. First, go to Class Tools and choose Rubrics. To build a rubric, click New Rubric. You have to name the rubric. Draft will be the status of your rubric until you're done editing it. And don't even touch the status menu yet. You can edit all sorts of things about a rubric while it is in draft status, even how many levels and or criteria. There are two things, however, you cannot edit once you save your rubric or leave this initial setup screen. The rubric type and the scoring method. We will look at these two things in more detail on the next two slides. Rubric type, analytic or holistic. There are two types of rubrics in D2L, holistic and analytic. A holistic rubric would be like ABCDF with a general description of what each of the grades says about the student's work. An analytic rubric breaks it down into things like thesis statement, supporting evidence, discussion responses, etc. An analytic rubric is a grid, and a holistic rubric is like a grid with just one row. We will use an analytic rubric here. Scoring method. This is the other thing you will not be able to change once the rubric is saved. The scoring method. The default is points. If you just leave it alone, you get the default. That will be fine for some rubrics when all the criteria are equally important and equally weighted. If you want to have well-documented evidence, however, to be worth more than spelling, you need custom points. The important thing to remember is what happens when you click Save. The rubric is created when you save. For this particular rubric, the type, analytic, and scoring method, custom points, are now set in stone. Now that we have created our rubric with its basic properties, we need to set up our levels and criteria. Here is our basic grid. Criteria are the things we grade the students on. They are the labels for the rows across. Levels are how well a student did on the criteria. Levels are the labels for the vertical columns. Note that we can add criteria, add levels, and reorder the criteria. We can also group our criteria by kind. For example, in a rubric for a paper, you might have criteria that are related to the content of the paper and criteria that are related to the quality of the writing. These could be criteria groups. Want to go from high to low rather than low to high on your levels? Edit Levels gives you the option to reorder the levels. Let's notice one more feature of our rubric, Overall Score. Overall Score will, after the last column, total the points the student has accumulated based on what you have ticked off in the rubric. But what is this 11850 in Overall Score at the bottom of each column? Did D2L forget how to add? Level 4, for example, is worth 12 points, not 11. The 11 you see is not a total, it is the lower limit of an overall rating that D2L assigns by default. A student who scores at least 11 gets the highest overall rating. This rating is not something that goes into a grade calculation, but it is something that the student sees, and it is editable. More on this, our new rubric exists in a rudimentary form. Now let's edit the first criterion. From the Edit Criterion screen, we can name the criterion descriptively and add descriptions of each level of that criterion. This is where we set the points, or modify them from zero with a migrated rubric. We can also add feedback. For example, if we said that some of the students' citations did not use APA format correctly, we could, in feedback, give a link to our favorite APA resource. But feedback is optional. You might fill the description field, 
When you are done with the first criterion, use the arrow in the upper right to move through the criteria. If you forget to scroll down and save, the next dialog will remind you. We've input the criteria with the descriptors and points for each level of the criterion. There are some more things we might want to adjust here. The names of our levels and also the overall score. For this rubric, with 20 points now possible, 11 points no longer seems a good cutoff for that highest level of the overall score. In this slide, I've already adjusted the level names at the top by editing the levels at the top. But now, at the bottom, let's do Edit Levels to Overall Score. So let's edit these using the same level names as above and keeping in mind that our top possible score is 20. This may seem tedious and redundant, but remember, students see these overall scores. Look what happened when our model professor forgot this step for a previous discussion rubric. The student scored the highest possible level for each criterion, yet only got the second level for overall score. Remembering that scene, we won't make the same mistake today. Here is our rubric, and we are now completely satisfied with it. Let's go back to Properties and publish it so that we can use it. In order to use the rubric, you have to change its status to Published. In addition, expand the Availability options and make sure that the New Associations checkboxes are checked. Otherwise, you won't be able to use your rubric. Finally, click Save. If you are going to use your rubric for discussion grading, you might want to do one more step from the Rubric Management page preview your rubric, and capture it to share with students. Rubrics used to grade discussion are not visible to students until the discussions are graded. Happily, this is not the case with the assignment Dropbox rubrics. If you want to use your discussion rubric to inform students' discussion postings, you need to either tell your students the name of the rubric and how to preview it in class tools, or provide them with a PDF that you can link directly into the discussion prompt. Here I'm going the latter route, printing my rubric and saving it to a known location on my hard drive. The next step is to upload the saved rubric. We're back in D2L now, in the Manage Files, making a special folder for rubrics. Click Save, then click on the name of the new folder, which will take you inside the new folder. There is a replica of your rubric ready for display to students when you provide a useful link. That's everything you need to know about building your D2L custom point analytic rubric. In the second presentation, we will associate the rubric with the discussion's grade item, not the discussion itself. In the third presentation, we will use the rubric to actually grade discussion postings. See you there.